Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to <laughs> You know the right things to say. Welcome to Saturday nights. We in the break room like always. I'm here with Jazzy, Dre, Talon, and Miguel. What's cracking, everybody? What's pop locking? Another Saturday, baby. Yep. Another day in this wobbless world of bullshit. You know. I hear you. It's another not drink, bad. as you know. Another day, another drink. I mean, I'm not saying it couldn't be worse, but I mean, obviously, it could be better. It could always be worse. It could always be. It could always be worse. It could always be better. Like, why do we even ask well, how the day was? Not as good as it should. It always be worse. Just like we don't <laughs> always make it better. So let's make it better. Right? You can make your day better. Not, really, that's, no, that's like All the right? old principal Arisa, What was her name? Pratisella was a liar. Okay, that was a lie. <laughs> you can't make a day great or not when you're stuck in a room, bro. I can't leave. That's not no. my choice. I can't. I can't go to the bathroom when I want to right now. So my day kind of sucks. Wow. Well, then you should have brought a cup with you, right? You can't or, do that, in public, bro, especially in a professional you're not in public setting. You have anybody? In I'm in a room? hospital. You have with anybody in public, that room with you? I, there's a window right here. Well, put your back towards the window and take a piss in the cup. You, you have wonderful solutions, sir. I'm going to write that down and let you know how it goes. All right. You do, do know that. there's a button you can click to stop. I'll also camera. let you know how much they're giving out for unemployment right now. That much- <laughs> well, they revoked the $300 shit, so you're asked out there. Hey, yo, yo, well, you, might, you might have to do exactly what this famous man's sister <laughs> did. All right. This is this is why we're here tonight. I, honestly, we're, I don't know enough about trailer parks to be able to do what she did. Nice. Segue. I don't think she wasn't in a trailer park. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? But yeah. You, 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 you tell me those weren't trailer park like people did. just because they weren't in a trailer. Okay. That's, that's kind of. I mean, that's kind of valid. <laughs> yeah. However. Yeah. The they all had Dusky, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about the Queen of Math, Lori Arnold. That's right. Queen of mess. <laughs> the queen. Man, I, I don't even know how I feel about this motherfucker story. Like, <laughs> I want to, I have, and I see the sympathy, I have the empathy, but at the same time, I'm like, if you weren't white, though, this wouldn't have happened like this. The way that, like, there's an appeal exactly. for yeah. your Kyle psychology chance after chance. and, Kyle like, all this shit. Time. I'm just like, man. Oh, like, hell yeah. That's, that's not happening. Just all know. this, like, but at the same time, even though it's not happening, it's just like, damn, I'm not gonna like detract from the horrible experiences you did have. But uh, I feel like those know. are two separate conversations. Like those are two completely different things. Like they they're connected, I, but at the same time, it's like, eh. I I'm not gonna disagree with you there, but the fact of the matter is, is that like I respect her experience, but I also just kind of don't give a shit because too many people who aren't white. Just get kicked to the curb. It's just like, all right. I'm not gonna lie though, she did a thing. <laughs> yeah, she did her thing. Yeah, she held it down <laughs> randomly. At no point while watching the documentary, it seemed like she really knew what the fuck she was doing. She was just kind of like that's probably what helped her, to be honest with you. Uh, probably, mm-hmm. yeah. She that's but that's the only way it was that, like, honestly though, like she was a criminal mastermind because she did in some ways know how to manipulate the system and do things to work in her favor. And across five states, she did more than her thing on that one. I got the middleman out. We we gotta get into all of that. She she yeah. I'm not condoning uh drug use, nor am I condoning uh drug selling <laughs> on this show. <laughs> However, she did her motherfucking thing. Look, bro, do you buy yeah. ibuprofen? No. Yes, yes, I do. All right then. I steal it. <laughs> you work for a hospital too? No. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. All right. So 
she's not, I guess, famous enough or relevant enough for a wiki. Or really? they just want to keep Right, I know, but they just—they she just probably want to be. Kept you get a out documentary. Of don't have a wiki page, right? <laughs> the documentary. Maybe the documentary is how they get their wiki together. Well, I got a close, a close rendition of uh, her life here on Grunge dot com. So that's where our information is going to come from today, or just our narrative, because we we seen the documentary, we know a little bit about it. So this is just where we're going to be reading from today. Grunge dot com. Uh, this it starts off talking about Tom Arnold as it should. He's the famous one. You know what I mean? And is he really famous? Because I, I, you know, yeah, yeah. Roseanne, Roseanne made him said, relevant. He said, "You say he's a B-list actor," and I'm like, "That's kind." He's of like a B-list. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's giving him more credit than what he's worth. He had like he had B-list. B-list he had B-list fame at one point, but I don't know if he was ever in anything B-list? actual B-list. B-list like ex- exit wounds is probably the only thing. Probably. You're gonna make me do it. All right, all right. You're gonna make me do it. We're gonna pull up his. <laughs> we're gonna pull up his IMDb. We gotta do it. He's been in some good stuff. Roseanne yeah, but has he? He's never been the main role. That's that's what I'm saying. Roseanne. Roseanne. Ah, that's funny. He was in Roseanne. He was a writer two up there. separate ways. <laughs> oh, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Ugh. Why would you? Only he would. <laughs> That's actually, um, I mean, that was, um, nice, that was a smart, that's a smart move. That's a power move. Right? Roseanne got paper. She, she had paper. Up. She still yeah, got she money. Fucked up. She fucked up, kid. She fucked up. No, no. He fucked up. What do you mean? That, yes. That's he fucked up. Up. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> he definitely did. He definitely did. She fucked down. <laughs> 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 Because Roseanne is actually funny. She she actually she, she's she's got some funniness to her. She's a little aggressive too. Yeah. Well, if you if you've seen the documentary in any way, you see that she's not you know afraid to hang out with trailer trash. Regardless oh, of all right, the all right. I give it to him. That I forgot that he was in True Lies. Yeah, but like that's Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie. Yeah, that's not his movie. <laughs> yeah. The Arnold stick together. What about the stupids? Nineteen ninety six. Fuck the stupid. Right, Arnold. yo, that you're right. That's classic. I think that's in the top twenty five on IMDb. Yeah, yeah. It's second to True Lies, yeah. and then you got Exit Wounds, and then uh, Mikhail's Navy. I don't remember him in Exit Wounds. Mikhail's Navy is the only movie no, I, I remember him in headlining, Exit and I enjoyed it as a kid. It was a bunch of bullshit. Had Tim Curry going ah ah all the time. Like it was, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Tim Curry. Ah, ah, yeah, ah. No. Other than that, he did a lot of one-offs and TV shows and shit. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Like maybe, shows. maybe I guess he was a C-list with B-list uh, accolades, but he had a couple you know. of movies that kind of made him a B-list. But you got to be consistent with those movies to be considered a B-list actor. I feel like he was. I said B list because he did Mikhail's Navy. Oh, yeah, so good. I think even he even like breached uh, the water and then just came right back down. Soul Plane. Oh yeah, he was in Soul Plane. <laughs> oh oh yeah, so he was. Plane. Token White Dad. Hey, that's still funny. though. Amanda. Hey, what's up, what up Lulu? What's good, Junkers? <laughs> so Thank you for stopping by, saying hello, seeing what's good. Let me tell you though. We're, we're talking any... about the un- irrelevant brother of Queen Meth. Queen of Meth. And it's crazy because she she's only in the spotlight because of her C-list actor brother. And we're giving him a C-list acting and acting is uh being generous because we could kind of he's he's skating on C and D. I think but, I uh, think C is fair because he did stand up and like he wrote for shows. C is fair. That's fair. All right. We'll give him a C plus. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got some. Needs improvement. Not. That's what we'll say. He needs improvement. But he's all right. <laughs> needs improvement. Needs a lot of improvement. And well, he also get- needs to oh, clear whatever the fuck is going on in his nose. I don't know if that's a condition, but he had a stuffy nose like a motherfucker. That whole lot. <laughs> what are you trying to uh, say? Don't have a stuffy nose shit. every episode. I, and you can hear it. Yeah, but... It doesn't no. 
He I know Tom Arnold's voice. His voice sounded not. specifically stuffy for Tom Arnold's voice. Bro, when did you? Like I he was, I was just talking up here all the time. He's just always on the top you of his nose talking. You about that little shit you put on the stove and you put in your nose and that shit fucking clears out your sinuses? Uh, yeah, Brother, how awful. old are you? You're like oh. a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> He's people, that people old. No, motherfuckers don't use those no more unless you're from the 60s. Because they're stupid. Just because it works and they don't know how to work a stove anymore. <laughs> now, nah, them shits will fuck you up. But yeah, that's it'll probably help. why. It'll help. It'll help burn all your sinuses. That's why you don't have any allergies after that. That's that's the, that's, that's the end goal, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Touche, motherfucker. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to this white lady. Where were we reading from? The grunge. Grunge. So, Tom Arnold became truly famous a few decades ago when he married the comedian Roseanne and has put together a pretty solid career in television and film since then. Lies. True lies. But uh, he's not the only Arnold who has <laughs> achieved a high level of success. Although he may not be in a mood to brag about his sister, Lori, that's because Lori Arnold excelled in the highly competitive world of making and selling methamphetamines. Like a real-life Walter White, Lori Arnold built an incredibly lucrative drug empire centered on her small hometown in Iowa. While her brother was acting in films like True Lies, she was almost single-handedly uh, driving a meth epidemic in the Midwest and making more money than she could spend. Here's the truth about Tom Arnold's drug lord sister. And yes, she was a fucking drug lord. Let's make no mistake about it. Lori Arnold was a fucking drug lord, which is the only reason why she has a break room episode. <laughs> Not because of her famous brother, uh, uh, Tom, but because in her own right, she is famous. Not in the way we like, but she was the white Nino Brown. Anyway, mm -mm. let's get into it. Lori Arnold was a model student and parishioner at first. In his book, and again, we're going to credit grunge.com for this lovely article uh, giving us a little bit of a timeline so we can explain what we've seen in the documentary because drug dealers don't get wikis. Well, I'm lying. This drug dealer didn't get a wiki. In his book, Methland, The Death and Life of an American Small Town, author Nick Redding reports that Lori Arnold described her family as normal and benign. As the auto... auto yeah, Ottawa. That shit is spelled. Why you put an M there? What? Who puts an M there? Is the M silent? Anyway, her small fucking town. Her parents split up when she was very young, so she went to live with her father and stepmother. They provided Arnold and her siblings with a good home, and she excelled in school and went to church every week. She even sung in the church uh, choir. It was a perfectly normal, wholesome childhood until Lori was about 12. That's when Arnold experienced a sudden change in perspective, becoming, in her words, like an adult. She began to rebel against the rules and expectations of her normal, boring life. She also moved in with her mother, and everything changed. Her mother was extremely permissive, and Lori Arnold lost all discipline in her life. She stopped going to church and began hanging out in bars as a teenager. Now, before all this, before her dad died, Lord, it, they didn't say it in this article, but her mother, her mother was a party animal and a drug addict in her own right, alcoholic and everything. She left the father to raise. She her. was an OG thought. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to put it. Are you, are you talking about her mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 She was an OG. Was a ah, that's, that's, a good, that's a good way to put it. It's thick, you said? Mm -hmm. that's, that's some homo <laughs> shit. <laughs> Fuck all yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Tom started fucking, um, 
he started not really seeing eye to eye with his pops and he moved in with his mother. And then after he died, Lori went to live with them. But that's when her life took a turn for the worst when she moved in with her mother. Because, yeah, she was in clubs. She was waitressing. She wasn't going to school. She started she drinking. Elks Club. She was yep. in the Elks Lodge fucking with Elks. Fucking with Elks. Let's, let's tell her how it is. Let's not be general. We know where she was. Let's put the name out there. <laughs> <laughs> See, Ooh, after a while, even the lax rules of her mother's house provided uh, proved to be too much for uh, Arnold. Still a teenager, she moved into a local boarding house that doubled as a notorious brothel. She began running an illegal poker game to make money and paid her rent to the woman who owed, owned the building by supplying her patrons with illegal drugs all before her 18th birthday. She started early. Yeah, she started drinking oh. at 14. And I believe around this time... She uh, was fucking with this dude that was like twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah here it is. Right. She was dude that was already got married to somebody that was younger than she was. Well, the stepdad and the mother made her get married. No, no, no. I'm talking about the dude before he even got with this chick was married to a girl younger than she was. A twelve year old, and yeah, yeah, twelve year old. Oh, you talking about OG yeah. thoughts? He was the OG pedophile. Yes. Yeah. Very yeah. much. Well, really? maybe not OG, sadly, but he was definitely an OG that pedophile. And, and Lori had no say book. in that marriage either. She had no say, like, um, based well, on. Well, no, she in, in the documentary she was saying like, in her mind she loved him and she didn't want to leave him and she didn't want him to go to jail. So what was she gonna do? Like, she mm-hmm. she wasn't she didn't want it, but she didn't want the other consequences. And she's like, well, that's what I decided to do. But she was young and dumb. Because who's not at that yeah. point, and there was nobody around to let her know that no, you can't do that. Instead, her shitty ass parents co signed it. Yeah, they they co signed the fuck out that because honestly, I don't give a fuck what time, what era it is, you do still need a parent's permission to wed that mm-hmm. young. She was fucking 14. Then they years just old. skipped what was it to Louisiana? Shout out to right. Louisiana for just being okay with marrying kids to adults, you fucking assholes. I mean, that's a lot of states if you don't know. Yeah, it is. A fuck lot them of all, states. Drake. Let's list them all and fuck them all. I mean, <laughs> you know, let's you be let's be like fair. 35 out of 50 states that are like, it's cool. She's 16. It doesn't matter. Hey, if if we got time, I got 34, 35 fucks I can give up. <laughs> you need about you need about sixty eight because they need two fucks each. <laughs> let's let's get to it. Lori began living a dangerously fast life when she was still a child. After an early childhood filled with church and good grades, Lori dropped out and begun a descent into substance abuse. Uh, look, the substance I'm drinking right now is abusing my my fucking brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A descent into substance abuse that would define the rest of her life. After leaving the stable home life provided by her father and stepmother, Lori moved in with Lori moved in with her mother, as reported by the courier. By the time she was just 14 years old, she was a heavy drinker. That was a pretty eventful year for Lori, because it was also the first time she had tried uh, an amphetamine, something she also did with her mother. So her mother's a fucking, she's a fucking low life. Now, let, let's let's also mention her yeah. mother. Uh, her mother introduced her into drug abuse when she started yes. working at the Elks Lodge because she was working long hours and she was tired. And so her mother gave her, uh, I forgot the name of the drug, but she gave her diet pills and she was prescribed and she started taking half the diet pills. And then because of her age and because it kept her up, um, she started to abuse them and it grew from there. She got wired off of them. Like, that's it. Like, yeah, it gave them. her energy and it kept her thin. Yeah. That's what she said in the show. I watched all the show today, so it's pretty fresh in my mind. Nice. Good. I like that. <laughs> I watched the last episode today. I want some of it fresh, but not all of it. What's uh, happening? Are uh, you making another drink? Yeah, because I don't like that thick shit. Mm. I don't What's know. It sounds like you like that. You did a minute ago. You shut the fuck up over there, right, Arizona? (laughs) 
Hey, wherever the fuck you at, uh, you know, you, you drink still choose orange juice. You drink your not wanted Malibu and orange juice. You be quiet. <laughs> so fucking what? It's good, and I'm not sober right now. So it, it does was look fast. like egg yolk from where I'm at. <laughs> right. Looks well, I'm, I'm also drinking what I got left, so you know, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just telling you what it looks like, man. It doesn't look like some. It, it's, or, it's orange juice and Malibu, bro. Rocky like, drank that. That, that Malibu got that. him hostile. Mm, not really. That's because but he that knows that and Jay did. You know, Malibu's for certain people, but he's he's had Bud Light seltzer, so you know he doesn't. Care. I tried a Bud Light seltzer. I don't just have a Bud Light seltzer. You, you look like a white guy. Right? Yeah, but you could also just <laughs> decide. Well, I'm just not going to drink okay. right now because there's nothing. Nah, to drink. Nah. Well, again, it's what we had, so I was like, "Fuck it, either I drink that or nothing." But luckily, my wife found. You, you could also have oh. like a, a lacroix. That would have been like the same shit, right? A lacroix. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I need alcohol. All right, I'm I'm not. Yes, right. <laughs> At least wine. All right. At least wine is good. Some there's some good cap. Uh, uh, some very good thirty percenters. Thirty percenters. <laughs> uh, I'm just fucking with you, bro. Drink what you drink. It's all good. Oh, I'm still gonna drink regardless. I, I just like to have debates. As noted, make, make sure story, make right? sure you eat the worm at the end of the bottle. You know I mean, that's what yeah. Make sure you eat that shit. Don't spit that shit out. Just know you might actually get worms from that because that's how parasites work. But eat it anyway. Why? Why? You're the best peer pressure I've heard in a long time. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Don't eat that oh, shit. Don't fuck you up. But go uh, ahead and drink that's that. That's for shit. another show. That's for another show. Yeah. I, it's it's kind of like those maraschino cherries you, cherry you had. It's kind of like that. Ooh, except like a crunchy I found those. squishiness. I mean, but you know, with every other drink, I try to throw at least one or two moonshine choke cherries. Did I say that? You right? like to I, choke I, on cherries? That's what you just said. Moonshine, Shut up. moonshine soaked cherries. You, you said choke. He said he likes. Listen, you have choke stuff on cherries in the, in the moonshine. In the moonshine. Well, <laughs> we also infuse that is them outrageous. Into kill me like, ah, like where the balls <laughs> are red. They dangle <laughs> down. <laughs> all on my bed. Whatever song he was singing, I don't know. Something. Like what? That. Whose song is that? I never heard that song in my life. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting. There ain't no fucking song. I'm just kind of antsy and we're going to break. <laughs> I actually found them. <laughs> Yay, baby. Oh, okay. I know there that brand. Oh, I didn't know they're making oh, chai- jars of cherries. Those are probably good on ice cream and shit like that. Two of these motherfuckers and a little bit of that juice in your drink? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I have to be on the lookout for those. Looks pretty good. I'm a little like a bear. I, like I got so no spoon on the floor. I'm just dig my hands in this shit. It's okay. You, you know what? I bet that would make a jar. good spiked Shirley Temple. Oh yeah. Yeah, Shirley's are good. You're gonna make me make one. I'm sorry. You just do made it. like two drinks you and you didn't even finish the first one. <laughs> what do you mean I won't do it? <laughs> it's just fucking grenadine and bar. fucking. Oh, uh, then do it. You're gonna talk about it. Be about it, Jay. Don't be a talker. Be a doer. That's what we are. Right. After I drink yeah, this one right here, yeah. I got you. Well, thanks to the show. I'm going to lace my Shirley Temple. Don't be a talker. Be a doer. What's Colin said? You should do that. What the fuck are you I talking about, I feel like this guy? is how uh, <laughs> Julie, Julie, wasn't it Julie? I feel like she said just do it. it. Nah, I feel like she's, she's <laughs> talking about some inside shit that I'm supposed to be getting. I'm not getting that right now. I'll tell you what I am getting. I'm getting back to the Lori Arnold story. <laughs> yeah. Back to Lori Arnold dropped out of. Oh no, that's where we're, where were we? Uh, uh, I do we know we were right here. She just started snorting meth. We just got to the yeah, meth part. and Lori also started actively dating when she was 14. She began seeing a 23 year old man, and her mother forced her to marry him when she was just 15 years old. Her famous brother, Tom, says this decision essentially ruined Lori's life. Meth land notes <laughs> that, that the marriage did. Yeah, just that decision. That decision. That Not fucking drinking, that was being a, a fucking just bottle just service like, girl at 14 or fucking snorting meth. Right. Well, I mean, let's be honest. This was before he did an eight ball of coke. So it's not like he was all there still, you know. Just before. <laughs> he was doing because some abuse. I'm pretty sure if you, 
a person that takes a whole eight ball to the nose wasn't that wasn't his first time doing fucking coke. crazy. No, he <laughs> probably hung out with Artie Lang at some point. Hell yeah, fucking tiger blood, baby. That's called, yeah, that's Charlie Sheen and Artie Lang put him through a clinic. That, They're like, you gotta open the nose like this. <gasps> right? Fucking holes, man. Yeah, yeah let's. Let's just say that too, real quick. Let's let's Got say those that McDonald's quick. straws. Because <laughs> <No>, what? <laughs> McDonald's, no, right? No, you crazy? They go from hundred dollar bills, bro. Now. When yeah. you making that money like that, you're snorting hun- from hundred dollar bills. I guess I don't know. I'm some myth. Especially if your boss is like, "Show us your loyalty. Take that right now. Show us your down." I'm telling you, the yeah, SFS yeah. family, the SFS family has to be an episode. That's, we have that's, to do an episode on Estevez's. Oh, just in case you junkers out there don't know who the Estevez's are, they're the Sheens. The Sheens, who like to portray like they're white. No, no, they're Spanish, guys. Except Emilio. I think they're Cuban. Except they? Emilio. Except Emilio. He's, yeah, he's, the, he's, the, only he's one one really, the only one that really... Yeah. Emilio was the cool one. And that's why the only good movie he had was The Mighty Ducks. That's fucking sad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's entirely true or not, but it's the only movies I know. So I'm gonna. You're gonna you all right, that. you're gonna make what? me do it. Don't, you, I'm going. I think he I'm did that on to purpose. IMDb. He did that on purpose. Probably to get How, away from Lori. Why am I supposed to be an encyclopedia of actors? Movies Typical and all talent. That shit? I don't understand. Typical, Typical talent. <laughs> you're over here talking about like this is his best movie, and it's like, all right, man, like, shit. I don't even know how to spell Emilio. Yeah. Every, almost every week, I, I watch like three or four movies these motherfuckers be clowning me for. But they always got a new set every week, so it doesn't matter. I'm just always behind. <laughs> it's something oh, I, I just don't hand. ever know. I asked him today if you ever seen Devil in a Blue Dress. He's like, obviously not. I don't even know what the fuck that yeah. is either, so... Because, no, every every time nowadays y'all want to ask me questions, nobody's asked me if I've seen shit for like 30 years, and then now everybody wants to ask me, and it's all the shit I have not seen or just been well, like, let's, I let's don't want to. Well, let's point out also, sir, that we're supposed to be starting a fucking movie podcast, and you haven't seen any. <laughs> First of all, don't even go down that road, because that ties us back to John Wick, and where are you at with that? That's what I thought. <laughs> I just established that I'm so bad with it because it's been on like TBS and TNT and shit, and I still haven't fucking still. Ah, Dre, Dre typed out typically Talon. Typically. <laughs> Ty- typically Jason talking shit, but then didn't do it himself. Mm. Well, he likes to call John talking Wick? junk, but you know, he, he talks more than that. <laughs> John Wick. <laughs> John Wick. It's just John Wick. You're saying that because you haven't seen it. So you don't First understand it's like one of the better DVD action movies in recent years. Daughter. I seen the DVD of Family Daughter. I'm like, look, see, we need to see it. And he's like, no, we got other things we got to watch. That family fucking dollar? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah, but it was, <laughs> it was part three. If, it's not it's not if Keanu Reeves invited you over to watch a marathon, you'd be like, I got a podcast tonight. I can't come over. I can't watch them. I can't do that. Yeah, you're Just right. Just say you don't want to see them, and it's fine. I'm going to watch it by myself. I'll watch it tomorrow before the pay-per-view, okay, yeah. Tyler? He's, he's lying. He's lying. Is it on HBO Max? He's still Which lying. one? I don't know. I think they were. I don't think they are anymore. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, like that's the only thing you have to watch. Yeah, it. I don't know. I just don't want to pay for it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I still gotta pay for it if it's a family dollar. They're, they're not gonna fucking rent it to me for free. <laughs> a family dollar. How much could it cost for a copy? Five dollars. Eight. Oh shit! Not worth it. Right? Not worth it. Especially when okay. I can pay like three or four dollars to rent it on Amazon, but I still don't right. want to do that. Okay, well, well, whatever. This point of not seeing John Wick. I'm sorry, exactly. Matthew. I'm sorry, but I've seen a lot of other shit. He's lying. This nigga's not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's off screen smiling, just being like, "Oh, give a fuck about that shit, bro." I'm king of this podcast. You know what, Tyler? Fuck Watch you, what okay? I want. <laughs> <laughs> I will watch John Wick, okay? Mm-hmm. Who wants to get on Patreon and watch it with me? 
Which one? Shit, I'll go on Patreon and watch second, it with you, bro. Second if it make you fucking bro. watch it. It might. Well, that, we but just know. Just get started. It. Just know that I'm like the typical minority. I sit there, I talk through the whole movie. I'm like, this bitch knew it was happening. It, that's fine if you don't say stupid shit. If you don't ask what? what's going to happen next. No, nah, I don't ask questions. Yeah, like, what's going on? I what's talk going shit. on? It's like, I don't know. Boy, what no, is I, that? My <laughs> little brother does that shit. My little brother would sit there. Is that the guy whose dog got shot in the first one? <laughs> yeah, no, my brother will ask questions like that. Shout out to Jose. No, literally ask if that's the uh, same well, thing. Jose he cannot be asking them questions if he's there. Bro, we could watch the movie for the first time together, and he'll have 20,000 questions for me. And I'm like, bro, do you know that I'm watching it for the first time with you? Right. I don't know the answer to these questions. And then I was cursed because should. my daughter's the same way. You told them to watch it, Jay. It's your fault. Obviously. Any any hooser. <laughs> uh, her mother forced say. her to marry this low-life motherfucker, this 23-year-old dude who shall remain nameless because we don't give pedophiles any names on this show but pedophile. And whoever jumps in the comments and says... Pedophilia is a mental uh, disability. I swear to God, I will look for you. I got a friend on TikTok that knows how to fucking search for people's houses through their IP address. I will find you, all right? Okay, Jay, you don't let people know you have that kind of uh, authority. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. He's not my friend. That's right? something you know. keep close to the chest and just use, and people are like, how do you do that? Now <laughs> they have a reason to suspect you. <laughs> You got to prove it. <laughs> I like your I am right. innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> okay. And usually I'm not guilty until they see my last name. But anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of Melendez's too, so you might be good. <laughs> yeah, they kind of, they kind of, they tend to like think it's Menendez. And I'm like, no, motherfucker, I didn't kill my parents because my parents were broke. <laughs> I wouldn't have got nothing but a jail sentence. So uh, she married this motherfucker when he, when he she was fifteen, and he was abusive. You think? And this was this is what started her down the cycle of getting with abusive men, which is usually the case when you're young, dumb, and a drug and alcohol addict, and, and have parents no parents. Don't give a fuck about you. Yep. Your parents were shit. Let's just make a point here. If you're a piece of shit parent, make people yeah it sucks it sucks but things didn't get better although they they looked like it was for a little while because the marriage didn't last long she got divorced by she by the time she was 16 but she was already deeply involved with drugs and alcohol though she did try to go back to school for a year and she said at that point since her life was taken into the fast lane she grew up so fast she she really seen all her peers as children by then. She was married. She had her own place. She was into drugs and alcohol. You know what I mean? You don't want to go back and all these kids are still exactly that, kids. Even though you're a kid yourself, but the life you live says otherwise. What you guys doing? Playing with your ball holes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> No. I was, you I, would say I, that I, shit. Yeah, that's kind of strange. I just uh, got some more wine. Mmm, butthole wine. Same here. What's with you and balls, my bro? The fuck is say, your I didn't say balls. Right I didn't say balls. I said butthole. There's a difference. Oh, uh, my Only bad. A fuck boy would say that. Knock it off. I think drink it's a your progression of thought, but whatever. You are getting drunk off no, my like drinking alcohol right now? Twenty percent, motherfucker. I got Sky Vodka as Chaser right now. Which, which, you trust That's me? What you're my right now. I heard somebody drink. say, I didn't say balls. Mm -hmm. I said butthole. And think yeah, of that right? as a defense. <laughs> it's a defense. It's a defense, it's a defense it right? <laughs> yes. Because only one sex yeah, has balls. How you from meth to buttholes, 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 man? You need to stop with that shit. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. On an episode where you're talking about meth, you're going to hear a lot about buttholes. Surprisingly, while watching three episodes of that documentary, I don't think there was one mention of buttholes, but you know what? That's just me. Maybe what I the fuck wrong. were you watching? You probably wasn't paying attention. Right? 
Thank you, Trey. I guess, but right I, am I not like one of two people you, out of the four that watched the documentary? How else you drugs, Talon? How else? Well, actually, it's funny you say that because I just saw motherfuckers cracking over open two by fours with drugs in them. So let's be honest. There's a lot of ways besides you bastard. the asshole. I need wood for this hurricane season. You're making wood go skyrocket because now the FBI got. I'm not everything. doing that. It's already skyrocketed. But thank you for thinking I have that kind of market manipulation power. I was <laughs> talking in general, Talon. Well, don't talk, well, don't get my hopes up thinking I'm getting a compliment. <laughs> All right. See? I'd like to think if you was making that much money, you'd you'd be able to take a flight to your with a private plane over here every week and do it live. Every week, nigga. I just move. <laughs> with that kind of, of money, you you keep moving. Yeah, but that's a lot of money. Jet fuel and all that shit. I bet this I bet home home chick here, they barely talked about the fact that she owned jets, but she owned jets and ranches and Bro, this shit was wild. she owned a hey. bunch of shit. We're we're just about to get into it, but yeah. she owned a bunch of shit. All right, Lori Arnold dropped out of high school for good when she was seventeen years old, already a divorcee, and with serious uh, a serious drug and alcohol ha- addict. Got her GED meth- though. Shout out for she that. She did. She did. We did. I mean, she did. She got her GED. Said we did. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Jason. Uh, they're going to play with their buttholes again. Uh, Lori Arnold <laughs> dropped out of high school for good when, when she was 17. Oh, I read that already. When she was 18 years old, she, uh, she met her second husband, Floyd Stockdale. Already? Ar- yeah, already. She's fast. She's living the fast life. Jump, jump. Jump, yeah. jumpy. I mean, what goes... She's what goes? Moves. You know what goes with drugs and alcohol. What do you mean? Dick. <laughs> Anyway, (laughs) Arnold gave up her job working in a local bar, and the couple moved into a small cabin outside of her hometown. And Arnold soon gave birth to their son, Josh. I mean, at least she waited, because nowadays... I think she was like 24, 25 or something like that, she was saying, when she finally had a child. When she had her son? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, because Google want to put a fucking ad on this shit. Because she mentions in the documentary, like, there's a picture she's looking at of her and, her and Josh when he was like two, and she's like, I think I had to have been like around my mid twenties or something like that in my twenties. So at least she wasn't. At least Floyd, despite his shortcomings that he has, he wasn't a fucking rapist right. and a pedophile. I mean, how I old was he? Oh, he was definitely older. I think she said sixteen years difference. Yeah, so that's still, that's a lot. It is, but I mean, that it can be worse in the situation, you know? Yeah, I mean. I'm not saying I condone it necessarily. He was already getting it could have been worse. by 14, so. Yeah, this is very true. Arnold gave up her job working in a local bar, and the couple moved into a small cabin outside her hometown, and Arnold soon gave birth to their son, Josh. Cut off from her friends at the bar and often left alone. Okay, what what are they talking about here? I think I feel like they skipped a whole bunch of shit. Oh no, no, they didn't. Uh, she had postpartum depression after she gave birth with Josh, and she was home all the time. And they didn't mention here that her husband Floyd was he was the the head of a biker gang. I forgot the name of the biker gang. The Grim Reapers, I think. Yes, yes, sir. The Grim Reapers, uh, pretty notable uh, gang, uh, biker gang. I'm pretty sure all you guys have heard of the Grim Reapers. Uh, so he was always out, and she was always home alone, and she's not used to that life. She's used to the fast life. She's like she's used to go going and partying and doing drugs and everything, and she can't now. She has to stay home with her son and do drugs. So she's depressed. <laughs> anyway, I think Stockdale. the reason why that happened though is because that was her example of motherhood. Like she yeah. knew that that's not what being a mother was, but that was the example she grew up with. So she just went with doing that. And the fact that that comes with addictions and she has addictive qualities, she was fucked from the beginning because she didn't even have a mom. How are you going to be a mom 
when you don't know what a mom does. Touche, Tali. Touche. She emulated the life that she's seen. So what can what else can you do? But as emulation. Adoption, but whatever. Uh, you can't put yourself up for adoption. The what? fucking kid. And in the sixties, the sixties. Oh well. She wanted. Technically, to yes, you can just run away. Find somebody else that likes just you. Put herself in a fucking basket outside of a firehouse. I don't know if that works that way. That in that time, bro, they would have just grabbed her and shit would have happened. Which probably still would have been a better life than what she had. Uh, and he would have kept the basket. Her husband Floyd was a heavy drinker, a drinker, and he routinely became violent when he got drunk, beating Lori, uh, beating Lori badly on several occasions. Her life had quickly become a pretty horrifying and depressing one. Uh, let's it, put a little note there that uh, in the documentary they mentioned that they would calm Floyd down from his alcoholic rage by slipping. They would drug him with meth because that would calm him down to make him talkative. <laughs> when you when you have to drug somebody with meth for them to calm down, there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And it's also no like if that's your calm that down from alcohol, war. you are an abuser. He fought in a war also and had PTSD. Okay, so that's an excuse. No, it's not an excuse, but you know it's it's good to know. I guess <laughs> it doesn't change my opinion of him being a piece of shit overall. You're right, and, and I want to say for the record, this lady is also a piece of shit overall. Like, I, it's unfortunate that her life directed her solely to being a piece of shit, but she, a piece of shit is a piece of shit. At least she recognizes it and is like, "Sorry, but like, you're it's right." It's a remorseful piece of shit. A piece right. of shit is a piece of shit, and from two pieces of shit, we get to another one. That was when Lori Arnold's new brother-in-law, who introduced her to methamphetamines for the first time, when her brother-in-law dumped a pile of what he called biker dope on the kitchen table, it changed her life. She would simply never felt as good as she did when she tried meth for the first time. For someone as depressed and unhappy as Lori Arnold, it was irresistible. As the Daily Mail reports, she was soon hopelessly addicted, snorting meth day and night, and going weeks without sleep. Mm -mm. She was a zombie. <laughs> that was when she it, said it felt so good to her she had to put her friends on. They they framed it, at least in the documentary, like I know they weren't trying to make this statement, but the way that they were showing it was as if it was like a sudden epidemic for white people. As if meth was the sudden crack for white folk in trashy neighborhoods. And the one thing that I didn't get from the documentary was where exactly did the meth come from? Like she was meeting connects, but like there was a really clear it came understanding. From Cali, where, which I'm pretty sure we're gonna get into in a second. I, I think all Cali. they said was that like biker gangs were cooking it in Cali and like that's it. Yeah. And then then uh the Mexican cartel got into the game. As I might always. have missed that part because that would make more sense. I don't know how you missed it. Oh, who's who's watching the, the X-Files? <laughs> Dre, you watching the X-Files? Yeah, I'll turn my TV off. Or I'll turn I like, no, I like that. This nigga's in class just not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> He's streaming straight from his phone to the TV. Watching a documentary right now. <laughs> what a way to catch up. How much he just described the Discovery Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yes, if you want to see, and Discovery is not paying us for this, and they should, but uh, if you want to see everything that we're talking about today, just uh, subscribe to Discovery Plus and. Uh, yeah, watch the Queen of Math. Or do what you I can did. get a seven day you, trial and you can mom. check it out and then just cancel that <laughs> shit if you want. Because again, they're not paying us, so we're not gonna tell you to say stay subscribed, but check it out. You might like it. Yeah. Yeah, they got some good stuff on there. Just do what I did. Steal my mom's uh password. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out to Jay's mom. Thank you for that. 
<laughs> Shout out for not knowing how to hide your shit from him. <laughs> she uses the same password, so. Okay, that's that's a great information. Yeah, TMI. TMI, Mr. Richard. Why did they go back here? And now it says Lori Arnold's husband was her drug connection, but they just said, and we heard that you know her her brother in law is the one that hooked her up with it. So let's let's read what these inconsistent motherfuckers got to say here. I mean, by association, I guess technically he was because he introduced her brother. I mean, his brother to her. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's a strong connection, but I mean, it is a connection. I mean, it's kind of a strong connection if you're. Husband's right. brother sells so sells so shit. So, right. I suppose because like the same thing happened to Tom Arnold and uh and her. Yeah, yeah. she was his dealer. Yeah, I could see that. It was a it's a family affair, man. They always get yeah. high and get money. Yeah, What's they the all wanted that money and horses and shit. Horses? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, obviously they bought a fucking. Re- they said they started with like two horses and ended up with like eighty four. That's a front. Motherfuckers ain't care. Don't care about no goddamn horses. And and that wasn't even their first. I'm all the horses no. ended up in the glue factory. Right? They, no, they, they just wanted they, some they, land and some property so they could maneuver it and money. This is they, so, they, they, they did. The, they were smart. They they, were, they did that. Which shit. is probably how she she still has money. Yeah. See, because the, they see first most of that shit. Clean money. Their too. first real front yeah. was the car place. And then later on, when she got the money, they bought a ranch because they wanted more land. So, like, that became them but it was the bar doing after, what they wanted to do with the, their money the while at place. the same time using the ranch to help keep that money going because they couldn't have the ranch without selling the meth. But they need to make the meth. So, they used the ranch to make the meth because they talk about how they dug out a Don't forget about the bar the because trailer. without the bar, they couldn't sell the meth. Right, like it's it's an all it's all around kind of thing, but the ranch I feel like is a thing at least for her. Like they were, that was their trying to be into legitimacy, baby, because they were doing race horsing and like training and stuff like that, to where they were trying horse, to have horse legitimate racing, business there. Wait, hold on, what did car- he say? <laughs> he said race horsing. <laughs> what race, the fuck? Horse race racing, is? race horsing, whatever. Race motherfucker. Jeez. Race Wait, horsing. Race horsing. My whole point. Because I had a grammatical flaw. I'm not the president. Don't pull me out like that. (laughs) We're going to race car fans. Anyway, my point was, is comparatively to the uh, car (laughs) mechanic shop that they had set up, that one, they didn't give a fuck. They were selling cars for like $500 and like just bullshitting the whole thing so that way they could front the money through. The ranch thing, there was more legitimacy in how they were moving with it because they did give a fuck about it because they were poor white trash and now they owned horses. Like that was definitely part (laughs) of their dream being met, but it was definitely something they couldn't ignore as being a utilizing like as a front or utilizing the property. Like they had no choice because as you watch it, no matter how much money they were making, they were still somehow living check to check or pound to pound. Pound to pound. They were making like a hundred thousand a week. Like Yeah, and she still was talking about at one point how she had to come up with fifty thousand dollars for somebody's bail. Like how are you having to come up with that when you saw hundreds of thousands of dollars? It's called eight hours of work on the same corner. That was in the beginning. She Nah, she, she this, this is why stuff, this is why she's a victim because she wasn't really like moving with intelligence. What the fuck she are you was moving now? off. Does she look like this? Oh my god! <laughs> Stay it's over there, right, with your bullshit. It makes you virulent. <laughs> virulent. It looked like this. Yeah, well, it'll make you, you look like you're harder you're than a business. fucking rock. <laughs> when I said get a cup and pee, I was talking to Colin because he's in a room where he can't use the bathroom. I wasn't talking to you. This is a survivor, First motherfucker. All, you don't I'm have to drink your urine. Asshole. That, that, that looks, looks like, like urine. Stop me. Urine stain. Is that what people call in the urine right? now? Mr. Bundy is getting to his point, and you interrupt him to talk about pee. First yeah. ball is not pee. Stop Bundy's it, Mr. Bundy. Richard. Bundy's out here spitting 300 bars, man. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I, I'm not gonna lie. I got tripped up. No, I lost that fucking train. It kept going. I said, "Fuck you, bitch." 
Kept going. You, got, you got this guy with the weird haircut talking. <laughs> Take your hat off, bitch. Uh oh. Take your hat off. Uh oh. <laughs> what? Any anyway, uh I think that I, I kind of remember what I was saying. I don't think that she was like on some freeway wiki. I'm sorry, freeway Ricky shit. She was not on. <laughs> She's like, definitely uh, not on wiki. We established that. <laughs> uh, she was not moving with knowledge and like understanding of the game. She was moving with opportunity and utilization of people who could help her. She wasn't really like. She's the queen of meth because of her distribution, but she was not a queen pin, in my opinion, because she didn't really understand what the fuck she was doing. Because when they started to dismantle her, she didn't even fucking know. Even after they started to dismantle her, she bitch, they, she just didn't really fucking know. And everybody she was with her just like, I don't know, I guess they're done. Like, no, they don't just come to your fucking place, raid your whole shit, and take everything and leave you there. There is an, a, there is an agenda. You you should be very worried and be changing your shit up. And they're just kind of like, I don't know. I guess it's okay now. Like, nah, you you We're walked to into this. And they, shit in a second. This yeah. is why I believe that, you know, she's kind of a victim to her whole experience because she really doesn't give off a vibe that she knew at any point really what the fuck she was doing. She was just doing things and going off of, like, notions. And... I, I see I don't what know. you're saying, but you don't you don't get to as far as she got and make as much money as she made just going through the motions. She had she to have cocky. a little she had to have a little game about herself to do what she did. And I, I agree with that, and I don't think they really touched on it, uh, her personality in that regard too much in the in the documentary. They're they definitely frame her as an uh sympathetic and empathetic kind of character as opposed to those yeah. small moments where they talk about how like she walks like a trucker and like she kind of doesn't take any shit, she's <laughs> tomboyish. That gets brought up a couple of times, but they don't really talk about that in regards to her attitude of selling the meth. They kind of just like it's it's not detailed. It's just kind of like I met this guy and then we did this the shit. She and... did say though that she wanted to start selling to her friends and everything because she's seen how it made her feel and she wanted them to feel the same way. And then she noticed how it was selling. So she was like, I can make fucking money off of this. She started making the money off of it. And she said she really didn't think about the consequences because honestly, she really didn't do meth that long. She did it for a couple of years, but not significantly say enough for meth, but. Yeah, but not significantly enough to start showing signs of, you know, because she wasn't just doing that. She was drinking and everything. Yeah. She didn't want to ruin everybody's life, she said. Yeah, but, but I mean, <laughs> also, uh, it is a hard drug. You know it's a hard drug. You know it's illegal as fuck. So at what point are you now still, like, responsible? <laughs> Like at what point are I mean, you making all that money and buying a ranch and going from four yeah, to eighty four horses? This is when the whole do you go like, well, right. I have eighty four horses because I'm dealing meth out to people, and like she, you're gonna tell me that at that point she's not aware of the negative effects of meth? I don't no, think she, she wasn't. Well. Meth was a fairly new drug at this time. At but it's high, damn, but like it still had the signs of a highly addictive and destructive drug. I don't know. It's just like cracking new jack. It will crack when when, when these drugs Nobody first knew. come out. People just having fun. They don't really know how it's going to affect. Them yeah, they, they didn't really know what was going to happen. Okay. Oh, then I'll like give her days, up to the you already first know. time. Up to the first time she got put in prison. Then the yeah. second time around, she knew what the fuck it was doing. Yeah, that's part. That's the well, game. The, well, if you look at the yeah, interview, I'm just saying, the, at the what point around, did she knowingly start to hurt people despite whatever situation she was in? They're like, like I'm saying, like she can't just after, be entirely she had to sit down with her son. She had to sit down with her son, and like he really had to let her know, like how it was affecting, like her decisions were affecting his life and the kids in that town, because she sold to everyone in that area before she yeah, started but that was after. the states. All right, so yeah, right now, as long as time, but still in all, like at that time, you know, like when when she when she got out the second time, she didn't want to she didn't want to have to go through that no more. She didn't want to put her son through any more hurt. She was trying to you know live live a straight life. She she works a forklift at that other job, 
you know, so mm-hmm. she she got shocked. She got scared straight, if you will. You know, at that point now, because she now she sees the, the second picture. time, motherfucker. Yeah, after the second oh, after time. After the second time, at least, at, it, at, least it happened at some point. Just opulent white skin. This bitch. I mean, hey, look. Years in jail not not all of us with not so bright skin get more than one chance. Just saying, you're lucky for that. If that, you know, but that's, that's my point. She, she had she had a second chance, and then um, she even told her brother, "Mind your own business." Like, he's like, "Yo, they know you're dealing again." You know, yeah. like until you stop now, they're gonna throw another life sentence at you. Mind your damn business. It's like okay. See, but we need to get there. Like, yet. how is she gonna say that shit? But she's a victim. Like, either she's a victim or she low key actually knew what she was doing, and she's a, just a piece of shit. She's, she's probably a piece of shit. Playing, playing victim. Like that seems more real. That seems more like the case to me because after that whole conversation with her son, they cut to an interview with her where she's like, "I don't like to share my emotions and da da da." She comes off very uh, Iceman ish, where it's just kind of like she was saying what she knows she needs to say, but she really wishes she could still sell meth. <laughs> she was, hey man, with, I mean, she was the game for real. She, she, you get addicted to that kind of shit. I mean, she's. I think she was absolutely addicted to her lifestyle because she kind of like hints at it several times. Yeah. Not the meth. She was addicted to the lifestyle. The lifestyle. Yeah. Because she talks about how like she wanted to have a bar again. She wanted to have the ranch and like all that stuff. She wanted to have the fun she used to have when she first got introduced to it. So she just went back to doing that to try and replicate the life. And I feel like. When she decided to do that, she did know that by doing that, she was going to hurt people, but she didn't give a fuck because the alternative was, I guess, working a forklift. Well, we'll get, we're going to get there shortly. Before before we knew, because hindsight's twenty twenty. before she even knew, she uh, figured, you know, they have a connection through her husband. Her husband and her brother are the connection to Cali. Cali's where you're getting this meth from. This brand new drug that everybody's snorting. Now, I thought, honestly, I didn't know you snorted meth. I thought you shot that shit up. There's more than well, that, that was an evolution of drug administration later on. Yeah. Well, Stockdale, uh, he had a link to a large methamphetamine lab in Southern California where the meth trade was largely centered at the time. After being introduced to meth by her brother in law, Arnold brought some back home, excuse me, with her after a trip out to California with Stockdale and introduced it to all of her friends in Iowa. Surprisingly, for uh, one of the most addictive substances on the planet, the drug was a huge hit. And before long, she started selling meth through a local bar. Her husband's biker gang connections helped establish her supply chains. And almost overnight, she was doing serious business selling the locals. Um, affectionately called ice, and that's because it has a a clear bluish look to it. Because hers, if it's done correctly, yeah. But hers was said to be uh, Walter Whitish. It was like pure, so pure (laughs) that those blue drums I got from Breaking Bad somehow. Like I can't believe she ordered that shit from a catalog. These niggas had to break into a chemical factory. (laughs) Yeah. Like, how did you not know that shit, huh? Heisenberg, you smart ass. Because it was ordered it from di- QVC. It was different <laughs> decades, bro. By then, they already banned it. They banned it because of her. So Walter White could thank fucking Lori Arnold for not being able to do it. <laughs> hey, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Some trailer trash made this difficult, Jesse. That's why we're breaking in. Yeah. <laughs> One it- of your brethren, Jesse. Is that your aunt? <laughs> <laughs> could, could have very well been. That's, that's, that's some shit he would definitely say. Yeah. <laughs> Standing over his dead girlfriend, he would say that. You're fucking. If you're weird. looking for, if you're looking for a high-profile profit business to start, you could do much worse than methamphetamines. Incredibly addictive. The illegal drug is relatively easy and cheap to manufacture. <laughs> or, as you know, what you're doing. Or if you know what you're doing and have a decent lab to work with, as Methland tells us with Lori Arnold, started her meth business in Iowa. She was buying her drugs from the Amazoa brothers. 
known as the California Kings of Crank. Both meth, t- meth took off so fast in the Midwest. Midwest, look at me. Midwest and meth. It's too much. No, no, you don't get to just fuck up your words like that. You suck, nigga. Learn English. <laughs> <laughs> He's hey, hot. Hey, I, I, I say, at least he caught himself. He was flowing, and you said race horse ra- racing horses. What the fuck he said? I said race horses. <laughs> race horses. Horse racing. <clears throat> race horsing. That's what he said. He was race horsing. Go race horses down horses down over down. down there and like that. You know, race them shits. Well, it, it's, it's, I'm saying this, this meth is real. This <laughs> meth is real. We can feel this shit just as soon as we snorted. it. I heard that was actually one way they started smuggling was using jockeys and horses. They were, they just started running the desert from California back over to Ohio. What? Yeah, some wild shit. They got caught by fucking. Uh, they were they were uh, riding the back. horses instead of putting. Them they in, like, they were riding. They, they were riding the horses and avoiding cars so they'd be off the road, and they got caught by Bass Reeves, and he brought them in. Okay, now you just bullshitting. <laughs> yeah. said Bass I, Dre, I know Dre would know who Bass Reeves was. Yeah, the I don't know the, the, fuck the that Lone is. Ranger caught the motherfuckers. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. It was his best episode. The Lone so, Ranger catches methamphetamine makers. Oh shit! Where Around the, this, where the hell did Jazzy just popped up from? The basement. The dungeon. <laughs> Is that a euphemism? No, she maybe left for a minute and then she came back. Nah, so he just said maybe. <laughs> Who knows with this guy? Maybe I don't know what that bucket's for, but I know it's there. As long as I... no, it's Who not here. That? Who said that bucket? I got the ice right here on the table. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a bucket under there, and I think. No, nah, I don't got. I don't got the bucket here no more. A bowl of what? <laughs> a roll of something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got a roll of toilet paper down here, motherfucker. <laughs> See, I even say that I said something, so now we all know it was a shit box. So let's get no. back to the. Topic. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Uh, I do not have a shit box under my bar. They were racing horses don't, across don't, the country. <laughs> they were, yes, they were racing horses, horses across horses. the country. And then what happened, Jay? She bought uh, <clears throat> the car dealership and was doing it with the cars also. But then they figured it was getting too expensive. And if they have the right chemist, they can do everything there for cheaper. Like, that's so crazy to me that Trailer Park Trash thought to think, like, we need a chemist. Like, I love that they were like, we got to have quality. <laughs> Put your chemistry skills to test. They right, like, where they find that? that had to be an ex- like an import. They did not find somebody around town. Everybody who grows up in Trailer Park isn't, you know, an uh, inbred idiot. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They had, they had to import that chemist. I wonder where they came from. No, the, like yeah, we're the undergrad. Somebody who grew up in the trailer park who said, "Oh, I have an idea." This is how she did it, though. <laughs> she buried an old trailer on the grounds of the horse ranch. She brought uh to launder some of the money, the the one we was talking about earlier, and set up a world class meth lab inside it, hidden from prying eyes. So this was smart. The bitch put it underground. Mm-hmm. In, so, in a structure lab underground. and the structure it was already built so she didn't really have to do do much to renovate it she just had to dig a big hole put the shit in the hole and make sure there was ways to access it that's it yes Talon make sure you put that uh, alarm on your car that's right tempting, tempting. <laughs> remarkably uh, the brothers weren't upset about Arnold setting up her own supply chain. In fact, they loaned her their chemist who trained Arnold's people into making high-quality meth. So you had, you had a chemist teaching meth heads how to make their drug of choice. That's dangerous. Probably because it paid more than being a professor. Uh, yes. Just or a high Walter. Dub dub. Right, like you don't even need cancer to be like, now oh, this tastes way more than benefits. <laughs> I don't have to grade any more papers. 
She was soon capable of producing 10 pounds of meth every 48 hours. Every two days, 10 pounds of meth, which was worth up to $145,000 per batch. So $145,000 every two days is what she was making. Bro, that's more than people well, make in a year. That's such yeah. a wholesale, though, because she was cutting the quarter grand. Yeah, but she was the she was the supplier after at this point. She started supplying everybody else, and everybody else would cut it down. Pre cut Damn, it so because she it was had too blue short. magic then. She didn't yeah. want people to overdose and stuff, so they had to cut it before she gave it out to dealers because it would be too strong. She they didn't just cut it. The dealers cut it. <laughs> She had blue. man. She she got her. No, top I think dollar. you are right, Colin. They cut it a little bit, and then the dealers cut it more. Yeah, because it was too good. Like they, yeah, like, she didn't like want she nobody. Had she had that blue magic. Yeah, she did. But blue magic was heroin. I fucking hate that song. By the way, I fucking love that song. Are you crazy? Fuck, fuck. That's, a, that's the worst song in the whole album. Niggas want to bring the eighties back. That's okay with me. That's where they made me at. It's, it's because that the beat is just it works. It's the beat that gives you. I'm going to Yeah, the beat is fucking bananas. <laughs> write my name in the history books. Yeah, hustling in the halls. Nah, I don't spin on my head, but I can spin that pot so I can make that bread, and I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> And just like Lori Harvey, she wasn't talking about it. She was living it. Oh, God. The, the illegal drug trade is a cash business, and dealing with all that cash can be a logistical nightmare. And no one knows that more than Lori Arnold. At, a, at the height of her meth empire, Arnold was earning about $1.2 million a month or about $300,000 a week. Since all of that money came in as cash, she soon found it very challenging to deal with, just like fucking Scarface. <clears throat> cash is king. That she usually walked around with about $100,000 in her purse, as one does, and even tried hiding cash in the walls of her house. Like everybody does. Floorboards, in the house, mattresses, everywhere. You're sleeping on money at that point. Like many other high-level drug dealers, Arnold quickly realized that she had to find a way to launder her money and transform that dirty cash into nice, clean assets. Her attempts to do so, which included buying a car dealership, a bar, several other local businesses, 14 houses, a 144-acre horse farm, and 52 racehorses, and hired the trainers, groomers, veterinarians, and jockeys required to care for them. No yeah, like a, honestly, a million dollars a month. No she's overspending. She got that money from. Yeah, nobody asked any fucking questions. Let me go buy a brand new car, and everybody wants to know how. How that broke you just with money? The, car. the government is going to look into these kind of things. So when I hear like her story, I just think maybe she had a lot of help. Mm -hmm. And, and well, she did yeah. mention how locally she had the police pretty much in her pocket. Yeah, because she had fucking that, cousins yeah, and shit on helped. the fucking force. Head of the SWAT team and all of that, right? I think uh, like her cousin ended up being chief of police or something like that, and her stepdad was like the uh, was it like captain or something like that. They're both really high up. You buy fourteen houses and you get fucking businesses, and nobody says, "Hey." Where you got that you from? Aren't, aren't you a piece of shit? How did you do that? <laughs> Hell yeah. You just lost like three teeth in the last week from snorting that shit. And you got your own 52 horse races. It, did you get all your teeth back? How do you do that? Isn't that expensive? That's your only your own 52 math. horse races. Your own people too. <laughs> horse races. On 52 horse, horse races. races. Horse races. Horse, ra horse races. Making those mammals gallop. <laughs> 52 horse races. <laughs> well, now, I like to I like to use the verb right. my friends use. And that's what she was using earlier. So that's what I use now. So, <laughs> she got too cocky, though. She got way too cocky and sloppy. 
And it's because he walks they, like a trucker. Yeah, but it became <laughs> a, it, after it became an epidemic, and you start drawing too much attention to yourself and the drug and choice. Then that's when the feds and everybody got to start getting involved. When they people are when making too much money. Tax money, man. Yeah, too much fucking money. <laughs> got to get that cut. Way too much tax-free money. Millions of dollars, bro, mm. in tax-free revenue. The government gonna get you eventually. Yeah, I made money from all, all these hedge funds and insurance companies. If she's smart, she would have started an NPO. But uh, clearly, there wasn't even smart. no internet back then. <laughs> what? What? You need the bro, internet what, to start what an year NPO. Do you think she was mo- moving this fucking? <clears throat> Why would you need she was the moving this to shit start a non-profit in the seventies and eighties? What does that have to do with establishing a non-profit organization? Because you know easy that is. You she's in white trash bill. Do you really know that she's she's not going to do none of that? She doesn't know what she's doing. You guys are There's making no a lot of assumptions here. There's no this bitch is Twitter. this bitch is smart enough to create a meth trade, but she's not smart enough to ever consider a nonprofit organization as a. Fund. Yes, bro. Yes. I, uh, I, you don't know. I don't follow that line of logic, but I don't care to argue it. <sighs> You're you no fun same, tonight. You were the same one saying how the, oh how, how could anybody any fucking meth head think to get a chemist five minutes ago. Right? You think, you think How could a meth head know it's not part of non-profit but I, but what my, th- my thing is saying is like you guys are saying that she's this smart ass queen of meth, so why wouldn't she consider that if she knew yes, what the fuck she, she was still, doing? She's still white that's trash, though, bro. bro. She, she no, you can't just she, be she white trash and then also a meth amphetamine drug mover. Like there's something there or there's not. And that's what I'm saying. There was like, she wasn't in for the nonprofit all, or anything else. Just, like you're incapable of considering something that you should have been capable of thinking if that's what you are. She was in it for the high. She liked the high. She wanted her friends to get high. Now everyone's high and they pay her too. That's but that what was at first. Was she wanted. She enjoyed right. just the lifestyle. Eventually, it was all about the well, lifestyle. She didn't even do drugs. She mentioned that she stopped doing them. Yeah, bro. She's a she's a uh, drug dealer, not a road scholar. Like. It's, it, it, <laughs> you gotta have. I, yeah, yeah. It was to be a road scholar. If you, if Jay is gonna compare her to fucking Scarface, she needs to be smart enough to think of a fucking NPO. Well, Scarface wasn't even think on about the level of Gris- Griselda okay. Blanco. Like, we're, like it, I'm, I'm just gonna call it here. She's a dumb bitch. She's not a capo. I'm just gonna put that as my position. She's a dumb bitch that got lucky a lot. Not a capo. Griselda Blanco is a capo. She- she got lucky that much. I'll give that to you, and maybe we'll cover her. Yeah, another, that's a lot of tiny uh, in that tiny ass white town where everybody knew each other. Yes, she got lucky that much because she already knew everybody, and everybody already was a shitty people. And yeah, I, I believe it was definitely circumstance for her. Most of let it. that shit go down. One of our major cities in this country, she would have got caught a long time ago, but that, she that did happens, it someplace where it was like a lot, lo- very low key. That happens all the time, though. Like, there's always mm-hmm. drug dealers who, who, who thinks about going to Ottawa. Yeah, how many of them get documentaries? Ottawa, 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 Ottawa. A lot. What are you talking about? <laughs> a lot. She of only got a documentary because she's Tom Arnold's sister. Freeway Ricky Ross has a documentary. She still made more money than Tom. Yeah, Arnold. but he also began relevance because people learned that Rick Ross wasn't Rick Ross, and he was basing it off of somebody actually people, named Rick Ross. People knew that. People knew that long before Rick Ross was a rapper. They, they did not it. not white people. Not Who cares people. What? I don't care. What, I don't care. <laughs> but it, <laughs> white people. White people didn't know this. Who cares? Right. So once they get aware of it, don't white people make it their point as if that's their new crusade? I'm talking about documentaries and drug dealers getting right. So if you see a giant change of the interest of white people as the white runner of shit, you're gonna be like, "There's an opportunity to get some of that white money." Well, she had a famous brother, bro. So I, that's that's the only reason why I could say she made mainstream. Nobody she cares about her. Some drugs she helped helm this she documentary. She was able to push it. Like, not relevant. Yo, she, yo, she probably threw a QP. I'm like, yo, get, get this under the arm. Yo, give it to my brother. Tell your friends at home. I'll tell you I'll what she did. Arm. Around this time, she did give her brother a whole eight ball. He snorted it in one nostril. The whole eight ball. That's crazy. What the fuck? That, 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 I thought I thought crazy. he was addicted to cocaine, not meth. It was you're, cocaine. You're a dick. Yeah, An eight ball is, a, is cocaine. Yeah. 
he uh he was telling the story. I watched the interview they had. They did like this joint interview. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> he got fucked up on cocaine and then he got clean and then he got to an accident on his bike and now he's addicted to pain like painkillers. It's like it's the, the it's the addict way, bro. But because... that's yeah, I, I mean when you're an addict, you're gonna you're naturally more susceptible to that kind of shit. He but went tough. from being addicted to coke in bars to fucking yeah. a bar. But he was he got clean. Roseanne he bar. He and everything. Mm -hmm. Roseanne bar. I see, I see mm -hmm. what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> okay. That, that, but that's the only reason why he fucking stopped snorting coke. Because Roseanne was like, you ain't getting no more of this short hobbit. Uh, oh God, dwarf stop. pussy, stop. unless you go to rehab. <laughs> dwarf pussy. And no he went to rehab, and he no did. No more of this box. No more of this shit. None. You can't have more. No more of this. Wop. No more of this shit. None of this wop, and it's not wet because of the juices. It's wet because I eat too much. <laughs> no, what? It's wet because of humidity. Humid. Uh, it's humid. Uh, My pussy sweating. I'm going to bed. That's the. Disgusting. Come start I, I, this, nigga. Hey, hey, I bet if we really want to know, we can ask John Goodman. Like that. Huh? Ask who? He got John, John Goodman? Goodman? I bet he No, knows. no, he's smart. <laughs> I bet he caught There's a whiff. no way he touched that bitch. Yeah, he might I'm sure he caught a whiff. Through the pants. That's some nasty shit. He definitely hey. did. Maybe some backstage head. Worse. Maybe, maybe. No, hell no. I, hey, John Rose Goodman Bar had, 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 had pull. Like, she was kind of funny and had money, so I'm sure she got Goodman and this dude. Uh, <laughs> listen, anytime you do more than three seasons of the production, you're going to get close to somebody. <laughs> right? I don't know. I don't She's know. like a line off her belly. Bro. I mean, Good, Goodman did end up with the kids and the show, so... After he died in the show, he still ended up with the show and the kids. So maybe right, he dies and somehow he still comes out on top. That's that's, yep. that's the magic of television. He had a low pulse. They didn't they didn't check it right. They were checking the wrong side of his <laughs> big ass neck. Right. He was like, oh, we gotta flip this, and then oh, there's his pulse. He was alive. Get that dirt off of him. See, Lori, Lori, around this time too, she did what every white person does. She got cocky. She got too cocky and she thought she was untouchable. And the cops raided her shit. All her shit. Right? Took all her shit. All of it. And they were yeah. low-key building a, a very solid case around her and she didn't know about it because nobody I mean, would snitch. But then again, look. She is out. You don't snitch to the cops, but you also don't snitch the cops out saying, hey, the cops were over here talking to us. Or the cops try to get me to turn on you. You know what I mean? They just let the bitch get raided. So is that loyalty? Again, oh, no. she was not a capo. That's not even <laughs> a, a consideration. So after a couple months, she started dealing again. And the cops were like, yes, I got this stupid bitch. So they <laughs> raided her for the final time. She didn't and even fucking move. She stayed in the fucking state. But not only that, they tried to get her uh, to turn on the Mexican cartel because at that point, this is where she was getting her stuff from because uh, yeah, they she, made it illegal smart enough for you not to, to do keep that, ordering. <laughs> they, everybody would have died if she did that. Everybody would have yeah, died. Yeah. There would be no case. Tom it would be an unsolved mystery. <laughs> Tom Arnold would have been the first one. Right? Hell yeah. Tom Arnold's head was found in a basket. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't roll on them. And when they hit her, they hit her. She thought she was going to get bail. And she didn't see her son again for like 16 years. Mm. She did 16 years in. And she came out. And she did it again. Bro, she did exactly. it again. Like she I went said. to selling peas right after that. She was selling fucking pounds. And the cops reached out. to, Like Miguel said earlier, the cops reached out to Tom Arnold. And they were like, yo, dick. Tell your sister to stop selling drugs. The bitch just got out from a 10 to life sentence. Tell her to chill or we're going to put her under the jail. They were she ready went, to give her life again. And they said, unless she stops, like, right, right there. Clearly, clearly, no, that's what under the jail means. You know, clearly, <laughs> that was a lie. Yeah. 
She's like, out how here many doing DAs are gonna be cool? Like, yo, she, man, she was she fine. Give the heads up before we shit. bust you. Can you stop doing the shit you're doing? I mean, I gotta ask to my boss. Ask, I got a couple fucking of boys, asking. You know? Can you please stop dealing drugs before we arrest <laughs> right? you again? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> right? Stop selling drugs before we arrest you. They wouldn't give none hey, of us that. You better throw that fucking barrel down her throat like you do niggas in the ghetto. Like the fuck is wrong with you? You don't get so, you don't send a formal letter and an email and like a notarized asking point of like, excuse me, man, would you please refrain from selling your methamphetamine <laughs> to the community? It's it's destroying everything. And we don't want to send you to prison. You know, that And then they don't like, even hey, you go know what? It's been a great talk. We'll catch up next week. By the way, can I, can, can I get <laughs> please get back to us within the next several months? Make sure you bring me a pound the next time. What and and they're sending this like they're typing this and then they're getting out of the car and like raiding uh, some black or Latino neighborhood for for weed, right? <laughs> Potential <laughs> weed distribution. Put it on. Yeah, let them pull that shit back in New York. Five years for weed. At least, at least in South Cal, that shit wouldn't go down the way it did. She would have been would have stopped the operations long ago. But Tom went over there and told her he was like, "Yo, if you don't stop." Yeah, he- he they gonna fuck do something. She was like, "Boy, <laughs> if you don't get the fuck out my face, <laughs> like, she probably put it like, like, get the fuck out of here. I supply you. You right? told me to stop. Where right? my money? Yo, I can Dance. see that shit. Ba, 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 ba. She pushed the shit out that nigga. Like, mind your fucking business, bitch. <laughs> get back over there. <laughs> you don't even. Let me tell you something. Your dick is so small, you couldn't even keep Roseanne, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Can't tell me nothing, Arnold. Okay, Tom." And then if you yourself. ask me, if you ask me, she hurt his feelings so much. Tom went back to wherever he was living and called the feds. It was like, that fuck that bitch. Go get that bitch. Right. <laughs> Go get her. He was just mad because she was more was successful selling meth than he was being an actor. After, yeah. After yeah. she did 16 years in, she did another six. So, so much for fucking putting her back in for life. She did another yeah. six years in jail. Another, I thought she did another nine. I thought it was oh, another right. six. I could be wrong. I don't wrong. know. She did nine and did it and then did six. So mm-hmm. technically, she, yeah, about 15, 16 years. F- 15. Yeah. And then it's funny too because she even said how, like, if she tried, she tried to stay away from it. She went from, you know, having a cigarette, I mean, having a beer to go seeing some friends and then going to the bar. And all of a sudden, somebody shows up in the bar, like, yo, I got to put this shit off. You know, and I got to next to you. Let me give you my number. And then we're right back into it. It's like, I know somebody, but, uh, you know, let me just give you a number. And all of a sudden, she's back in the mix. Yeah. Mind then what happens? Business, Tom. What, what happens to a, a white trailer park trash woman who grew up in the dump, went from fucking poor to a queen pin to rotting in jail for 15 years? What happens to her after she gets out? They try to make her relevant by giving her a documentary. That's America, man. That's just America. America. <laughs> would you give that same? Would you give that same opportunity to one of us uh, people? You know, no. you know, it's the uh, timing too. It's around the same time we got that Tiger King bullshit, right? There's oh a guy God. in jail right now named Earl who looked at a white lady the wrong way and did fucking life in jail. So. Lori Harvey, uh, Lori Harvey, Lori Excuse Harvey. Me. That's another. Wow. That's another episode. I don't no, even want to talk about that right now. <laughs> there is no listen, reason. So Brian is another episode. episode. Called Lori fucking Harvey. Her, listen, Lori. I'm telling you, her pussy's been through more of a story than what we went through for this past hour and a half. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> she's, a she's a trooper. But uh. Yeah. Well, that's that's all, folks. We we're done with the lorries tonight. No, no, no. You said that wrong. That's all, fuckers. That's <laughs> all, fuckers. <laughs> all fuckers. Yeah, yeah. We got some new merch coming soon. Typically, Talon. <laughs> Get your shirt first. Get it Hell here. Yeah. Pick, up your, Go to the pick link. up your shirt orders, man. Click my uh uh link in the bio. Mm-hmm. You know, you you can hit us all up on Instagram. We respond Where's back. My link. She joining the show? Maya Link? Maybe. I don't know who that bitch is. She got mm-hmm. Owen. Sound like an OF bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for a limited be. time, you get one of my moonshine <laughs> cherries. Like, that's going to be all nasty. <laughs> put it in it's going to be so nasty. 
Tell them it's gonna be all yes. moldy by the time it gets there. You trying to sell the junkers penicillin, motherfucker? No, no, no. I'm gonna put that they shit in like penicillin those, by themselves. I'm gonna put that shit in one of those protective ass plastic cases and just send it. Oh, exactly. The visa, the privilege was fucking. Oh uh, well, fuck you. Okay, I apologize. I apologize for all missing all these comments. China, yeah, when China's when China's not here, man, I kind of slack on the comments. I'm sorry. What's yeah. Jasmine doing? Jasmine she uh, retired. She bounced. She, she had her arm on this nigga. She had her arm on his arm. Like, yo, I'm going night night. I'll see y'all later. Gotta be a wolf. Always, always gotta be wolf. But what what is yeah. the lesson we could take from here, Tyler? Um, <laughs> life is easier when your skin is lighter. That's not true. That's it like certainly uh, sounds like, like it. Like but but that's not true. Nowadays, my skin is on the lighter easy. side, and if they see my last name, it's over for me. Right. So don't tell them your name. I gotta Say get my identification, names. motherfucker. You could, you could always change your name to Arnold. Yeah, change your last name, bro. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> Jason change your Arnold. last name to Jason Johnson. Double J. You gotta Jason change your name Johnson. to something banal. If you have uh, just a lame ass name like Bob. Yeah, Bob Saget. Saget. <laughs> well, he's literally like the only person in the world that I know that's named Saget. Who's yeah, fucking named Saget? Name. If somebody name, else has that name, it's got to be related to him. Unless that's the his last name is really Schroitz. <laughs> oh, oh, he's a little hat. Got it. He might be. I don't know. I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> that is, we don't we don't condone anti-Semitism here. That's There's not nothing. That was not anti-Semitism. That was a description of the fact that they have little hats that have oh, an actual term, yarmulke. But you're not gonna the yarmulkes. That sounds worse than the little hats. The little like hats a, clearly like being comedic. Team. The little it does. <laughs> the sound, it does. <laughs> no, no, no. The little hats. The little hats sounds like a baseball team. It sounds like a, a a baseball team that you could play as in backyard baseball. You remember that name? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> It's an, I'm telling you, the little hat sounds like a little league team, like the fucking uh, Mighty Ducks, and that's where uh, the Bear Jew originated from. You guys ever seen Inglorious Bastards? Inglorious Shoshana? Yes. Inglorious yeah. Bastards this is a great movie. I heard that that was a, a nickname of the Beastie Boys, too. What, Inglorious what? Bastards? Oh. Little hats. The little hats? That makes that would make that would make sense. Well, that's because yeah. they had little cocks and they couldn't fit. That's, into their that's how they had their. That's how the checks were made out. Sent to the little hats, not the Beastie Boys. That's and they was too aggressive for their bank. The little hats. Huh. <laughs> what is what are, what are you doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. We're having fun. This is the break room, man. We can't be concerned with other people's bullshit. You are responsible for you and your own proclivities. If what we're talking about is a little too much, a little offensive, or whatever it is, hey, click off, come back, or we'll see you next time. Whatever it is, ain't personal. We just fucking around. We now, have, uh, now I have to Google Bob Saget to see if uh, what his actual last name is. Well, you know what you guys need to Google? Not you guys, the junkers. Google Talking Junk. Google the Break Room. Subscribe to all our channels. All our, our social medias. We're now on TikTok. We got 300 subscribers. We're trying to get to a thousand so we could go live on there also and bug out. So help us get to there too. Share all our shit, all of it. Yo, you could go see me in a dress right now, We're looking for a bathroom because I got to take a shit. What? <laughs> just the go ahead. You go on on TikTok. TikTok. Just, just yeah, watch. All the you, you, you know that, right? Just yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a filter. It's a filter. Yo, live. Yo, I thought. Yo, what's up with that sign? You, it says no stupid people. That excludes you. Can't be doing that. <laughs> you get pointed out real quick. Come on, man. You're in Florida. Yes, that always covering that sign. I've never seen that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I can't even. Read she's it, like, man. she's like, yeah, I'm with stupid, but he don't know that yet. Let me just move over real quick. <laughs> then you just see it. Florida man. See that video That's was funny. Video funny. <laughs> That's video was funny. Which one? The one where he's in a dress. Oh, stupid people. Well, now I oh, think uh, dress. we're when done talking the about one white Jason privilege was being tonight. Himself, that video. Oh, well, yes, yes. Because I'm gonna do. I was doing in that video what I'm about to do now, and I'm gonna run for the bathroom to take a shit. Mm. So you gonna make another TikTok, a shitty TikTok. I might nah. make another shitty TikTok. But can you shit gotta... 15 seconds? New, new, uh, new challenge. 
I got 60 seconds, motherfucker. And no, I cannot shit in 60 seconds. It's more like 60 minutes. Hey, challenges. Shit, take, 60 take your seconds. video to the Super Bowl. Movie. Get with, out with, of here. Uh, fucking uh, Angelina minutes. Jolie. 60 minutes, bro. I, I chill, I max, and I relax in there. I, That's where I do my best business if, on the toilet. If y'all are yeah, curious, I, I am on TikTok. <laughs> uh, I do have a TikTok if you want to mm-hmm. follow me. It's at Tall and Bundy. I do be making videos. Some of them are funny. I just be bullshit. They're funny. Yes, they are. And we're going to start featuring them on the page also. Yeah, so you, y'all can find me up there. Hell yes. You can You can find Tolin at Tolin Bundy. You can find Dre but before at you do, Doc Dre. But before you uh, do, Mix so. is still Log trying to in. find his identity. Subscribe. Mix got a phone yet. He got a flip phone razor still. Yes. <laughs> nah, fuck no. Got just my, my got a black man over here. And, shit. and, and it's Samsung, so. Just inbox Mix on Facebook. He'll be sure to answer the <laughs> questions like, what are your pronouns? He loves to be <laughs> back. back. <laughs> He identifies as uh, they and them. So just to let you guys know, <laughs> he, he's just like Demi Lovato. He's, no, no, no. I, I am him and he, sir. You look what worse than I'd be him and Han. I can tell you that. I'd be him and Han. How do, you know, how, how do you know if you're like a him and a they? Like, I never. I, I'm right. I'm on this. He's well. Like, I uh, guess well, it's because it's it's the grammar. Everybody's in vain, depending on the reference point, but we don't think about grammar anymore. They, no, we it's don't. How we feel, but this is how they categorize it. They don't have a, a set gender that they identify by, so they are going as they and them as to not be categorized as a gender. Because they and them is not masculine or feminine. <laughs> it's just. Hey, I thought that was like if you had multiple personalities, then you could be like, I got one. No, I think I like, think that only goes for oh, Demi sorry, Lovato. Passed out. What the fuck? I think that only goes for Demi Lovato. I can only take so much. She's not a real person. She's convolution. Hey, Dre, chill out, all right? Because she's she's one percent black, so you're being racist right now. She's not. Hey, hey, she's one hey, percent hey, black. Fuck her. <laughs> Hey, hey, before we even continue with that, like I was trying to say before, everybody needs to go pick up their shirts, all right? I'm tired yeah, of seeing everybody in their shirts. break room or talking Makes junk shirts, just, all right? Makes us yeah, tired make, of us this make episode your pronouns talking about talking junk in break room. Yes. <laughs> yes, Colin. Talking junk in break room. Make those your pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell the crew is restless from talking about so much white privilege. We went from talking about Lori Arnold to they and them. Uh, Don't forget Lori Harvey. New, yeah, no, Lori yeah, Harvey. Lori Harvey. We had a few We're Lori t- Harvey name drops in here for I don't I don't know why. And Demi Lovato <laughs> for some reason. So before we get uh, too Brad. crazy in this break room, we have to let you guys go because if you oh, want to have yeah, another he, break room he's like, show, oh, this is some Patreon content. We gotta get off alive. Yes, <laughs> definitely, we gotta get off alive because this is the content that could shut us down. So before we get shut down, thanks for joining us, junkers. Be sure to catch us in the archives, Talking Junk and the Break Room Archives. <laughs> Click the link tree. You can find us everywhere on social media, Twitter, in our OF. Of course, you know it's in the link tree. Yes, everything. Mm-hmm. If you have a link for you, definitely have OnlyFans. This no, I don't got sure OnlyFans. This is episode. Nice. Stop playing. Listen, I might if that guy comes back on, I might have to start an OnlyFans for these feet. Jesus Christ! Hey, what man. the fuck? What were you? You, know, you, 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 you had your foot in that foot shit bucket, bath. didn't you? <laughs> no, right. not the shit He's bucket. Getting a mud bath My on fucking his feet. front yard is nothing but dirt. Fuck yeah! And your mud shit. Bath. Mud butt. Bag. I wish it was <laughs> like I ran out of toilet paper. Yes. We found the nearest tree. I need to go do some mud butting and then go take a bath. Hey, so, yeah, man. Take junkers, care of your business. Y'all have, have a good one. night. We love y'all. Thanks for joining in. Until next week, remember to hit us up. Watch Talking Junk Live on Fridays and the Break Room Live on Saturdays. Stay junky. Stay classy. We love See you. See you next week. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to...